Hi, David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. Passive solar greenhouse design is just getting started in Western Canada. It uses far less energy than the typical glass box greenhouse design and makes much more sense in the sunny, cold Canadian climate. Bill Swan is the executive director of the Groundswell Community Network in Indermere, British Columbia. He lays out just how much energy our current food system uses. And it's not just in the movement of that food uh, around the world, it's, it's in the production of that food. A lot of our fertilizers are, uh, are carbon fuel based, so the whole system takes an enormous amount of energy to get food to our table. And that really was a, a driving force in the creation of the Community Greenhouse, was to try and address this issue of food miles and localizing our, our, our food production. Groundswell is a cool little outfit. They run gardening and permaculture workshops, they have a cool worm composting operation, they run a couple of community gardens, but their crown jewel is their passive solar community greenhouse. The first thing that many people notice when they enter the community greenhouse is it's not a greenhouse like others. We have this big open side, but we also have a very closed side that's different than the conventional greenhouse. Come on in here and you'll get a better perspective of that. The design isn't super complex, but as Bill Swan explains, a couple of simple changes means you save a ton of energy. There's passive solar energy coming in the front of our building today, and then the way the building is built, we want to retain as much of that gained heat energy as possible. So unlike other greenhouses, we have an insulated back wall and we have an insulated ceiling. And this is how we retain our passive solar energy here in the community greenhouse. They also have an annualized geosolar system that pumps hot air collected at the top of the greenhouse into the ground beneath the building. But that's not all. Of course, another type of solar energy is right here. These little guys that we just planted 10 days ago, um, they're the absolute experts, of course, at converting solar energy into uh, food energy and that is a big focus here obviously at the community greenhouse we're here to grow food not just teach about energy and accumulate energy in, in the form of renewables if you're keeping track groundswell harvests passive solar energy annualized geosolar energy and of course photosynthesis but there's still more solar energy the other types of renewable energy we have here is more active outside on the roof of the community greenhouse we have uh, solar photovoltaics. We are a grid-tied facility. We generate electricity from those solar voltaics and we tie it into the uh, British Columbia energy grid where we can either sell our excess energy or, or purchase energy as we need it through the course of a year. We estimate we're covering about 50% of our energy needs here at the Community Greenhouse in electricity. The last form is thermal solar energy and beneath our feet again this concrete slab has uh, plastic piping in it with hot solar fluid. On a sunny day, we generate thermal energy from that fluid and we store it in the mass of the floor in this building. All this solar energy helps do one important thing at the community greenhouse, grow and connect people to their food. Plant-wise, they grow salad greens, peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, and more. Some of that food goes to the farmer's market in a trailer pulled by an electric bike. But Groundswell also has an arrangement with the culinary arts program at the high school next door. Andrea Salzbrenner is the chef instructor at David Thompson Secondary School. I believe it's bringing an awareness of where food comes from. We're able to grow our own food, bring it up here to the cafeteria and prepare it and enjoy it. And students are able to see food that is minutes old as opposed to coming from across country and overseas and really be surprised and enjoy, wow, we have cooked this ourselves, we've harvested ourselves, grown it ourselves, and take a bit of pride in that and then bring it back into the school. This kind of low energy appropriate design is only going to make sense as we have to do more with less in the future. Bill Swan lays out a convincing case for why greenhouse design is going to shift. Well, I think why greenhouses aren't all like this is because we live in an era of very, very inexpensive energy. And what we've tried to demonstrate here is to, is to anticipate the change in that reality that many in the food sector believe are coming, are, is coming. Uh, not just in food, it, throughout a, a society, energy costs are going to rise. And so what this, uh, a space like this offers is an opportunity to look at innovation in energy and apply it to um, commercial right, right to residential scale greenhouses. 
So they're not all like this right now, but I believe one day uh, more of them will employ these types of strategies to grow food in them uh, because energy costs will drive that. You can learn more about the Groundswell Greenhouse and passive solar greenhouse design at greenenergyfutures.ca. There you'll find our photos, podcasts, and links to great resources. You can also contact us on Facebook and Twitter. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.